In this video, we're going to continue working with artwork, and this time I'd like to work with a bitmap image versus the vector image that we used to create this little teddy bear with in the previous video. So what we're going to do is say new to get started. I'll leave all the techniques turned on and say next. Choose a light colored background and choose next. And again, I'm going to step on this handle here to be able to get the open dialog window and browse for a different style of artwork. So in the last video, I showed you that I can choose any type of um, artwork file that's in this list and that I have both vectors and sort of bitmap styles of images. Now let's look at the difference. Now, um, the software came with mostly vector images. I'm just going to browse to my desktop. And here on my desktop, I have some an image of some hearts. And it's in JPEG format. This was an image that I found on the internet. I just simply right-clicked on the image on the internet and chose Save Image As, put it on my desktop. That's it. So we'll go ahead and choose that. See, so now the path in here is looking at my hard drive at the image called hearts.jpg. Now when I say Next, instead of with the vector image where it automatically knew what colors were there and started filling them in with thread, here it gives us another sort of set of options. And so there's really three here. We could open this as a backdrop, which kind of just puts it on our screen and allows us to draw the shapes ourselves. Or we could do a trace, which will convert that JPEG into outlines for us. Or we could open it as photo paint. And I'm going to show um, kind of each of these in different times. So let's go through open as backdrop first. So I'll just say finished. There is my image on our screen. And this is what I'm saying. If I get close to this and I look, you can see that this is not a... There are dots of color here, different shades of red. You know, there's no handle. There's no outline to select and click fill to fill in this red shape. In fact, there is no red shape at all. There's just dots of colors. Now, you could easily take a tool, you know, and draw your own shape yourself. Um, you'll notice that the image came in and it's kind of big. It doesn't really even fit in my embroidery hoop. We can easily adjust our backdrops once we've created them on our screen. So what I'm going to do is just show you under the view drop down menu, it says backdrop. And when I hover over backdrop, a menu comes open. It shows me I have options. Hide, below embroidery, washed out, above embroidery, or properties. Now, I'll choose properties to get started here. And here I get an uh, opportunity to do things like resize the embroidery or straighten it or rotate it. So why don't I make it smaller so that it fits in my embroidery hoop? There, that looks like it's good enough. And if I needed to straighten it, and these are the view image, the view options, you know, blow, embroidery, washed out above, so on, so on. So we'll just leave all that and close this. And so now that my backdrop has been kind of resized and seems more appropriate, and because I chose as a backdrop and not the auto trace sort of method, I would now need to draw this myself. So I would have to take a tool like this outline tool and just click to get started and then basically just click around the shape to draw my own heart. So this is obviously different from a vector image where the software would already know the shape of this heart and I wouldn't need to draw it. And it's also different. Oh, now as I'm drawing this heart, this is a place where the curve point doesn't work for me, right? So I can hit delete on my keyboard to go back a space. Now, if I hold shift down, I can get a corner point there. So remember, I showed you that when we used, when we learned about using the outline tool just how to use it. And notice when I'm drawing lines, if I want to move the screen, I can just get close to that ruler and it knows to move me over. So that's kind of, these are kind of handy things that now that we're drawing on artwork, you get a little bit better idea of, you know, creating things from scratch yourselves. So yeah, um, when I'm done drawing my heart, it's going to go ahead and fill it in with, in this case, it's going to fill it in with a paint fill. And I guess it probably should be a red paint fill to look right, but there. So that's the idea of loading a backdrop and then digitizing from it. Now, let's just reset and I'll come back and I'll recreate the hearts again and we'll try the auto trace method. 